All right, guys, today's the day. The bike has arrived. About to unload it off the truck. Check it out. You so sick. So rad. Check out the box. Man, I don't even want to toss this out. I'm gonna wheel it right into my garage so I can get uh, get onto assembling it. Mind the mess, but just pulled the car out so we can get the get the bike in here. Yeah, if we can, if you can, put it so the the crate's facing this way, like right here, if that'll work. Yep. Just like dead center. Here we go, guys. The Varg is in my garage. You. Hell yeah. Yep, that works. All right, I'm gonna sign off on some paperwork. Here we are. Oh, baby. All right, guys, we're going to unbox the bike now. Uh, I did go through the user manual, but I'm not really sure what to expect other than what I read in the manual. So just kind of winging it and I'll take you guys along for that experience as I kind of unbox the bike and start putting it together. So here we go. First cut. Hell yeah. There she is, guys. First look at the unboxed Stark Bark. Really nicely packaged up. Got the charger on the bottom, the stand in the front, boxed up parts. Looks like the front wheels in the back. And I believe those are the handlebars up on the seat there in the box. So we'll get those out. Actually, I have a different set of handlebars I'm gonna be putting on the bike, so we'll go over that. But here she is. Actually, before I start doing this, what I'll do is I'll take this, my phone out of the mount here, do a quick close up so we can see how things are organized. Um, I already took the handlebar box off the seat and everything else is there pretty much. So off the front, we have the toolbox that's strapped in here behind the fork. So we'll just unstrap that and get that out of there. There's another accessory box down there. Here's your stand. And the charger is actually underneath the bike right now. They put this placeholder up on top to keep the box uh, from hitting the bike. So it keeps everything preserved. You have the shrouds wrapped up. Just so nice, guys. Look at this. Brand new Stark Varg. Man. Come back to the back of the bike. They have it nicely wrapped up as well. We have the front fender here. Put that on. Um, but yeah, it's actually the assembly looks stupid easy on this bike. You basically just have to put the front tire on, the bars. 
uh, the pegs, uh, front fender, you know, really simple stuff. So it should be pretty quick and easy. So you can see here on the left side, I have the owner's manual pulled up on my laptop just to go through and make sure I'm doing things right. So you're probably going to want to do the same thing just to follow the steps. They have a really nice user manual that they send everybody. So step-by-step uh, -step with really detailed pictures and lots of detail just to really help you out as you go through this. It's actually a simple process, but um, you know if you're all, at all concerned about it, just follow the instructions. It's really easy. So what we're going to do now is take the toolbox out. It's strapped up to the front here. So just loosen the strap up. Take a look at the toolbox in a second here. And we'll slide it out. Kind of angle it out of here so we can pass the forks. Here we go. Stark Varg toolbox. Let's pop this open, take a look at it. Do an unboxing here right on video. There's that. Green tin box. Check that out, guys. Ooh, man, so nice. Open it up for you. Oh, man. You're getting my live reaction, too. This is my first time looking at this. So, we got some calibration specifications in here. For the torque wrench, I'm assuming. We have a nice felt box. And it looks like some of the <laughs> looks like some of the pieces came loose here. So let's uh let's get those back situated. So you can see everything has its space. Everything nice, neat, and organized in here. You guys can see. All the tools you need to service the bike. How rad is that? Man, so sick. All right, next up, we're gonna take off the rear wheel from the back of the, or the front wheel from the back of the bike, and it's also holding on the front fender. So I'll just go ahead and unstrap this. So you have one strap on the top. One strap in the back. I guess it's the front. That side. We have another strap in the back. Real easy, actually. Three straps. There's your front wheel. They have it nice, nice and protected. Look at that. And if you guys notice, take a look at the stem on this tube. I know Anton has announced that there's a special tube in this thing. And let me tell you, this thing is actually noticeably light. Like, I'm actually, I actually feel how light this is with this lighter tube in here. It's actually incredible. So, pretty sweet. Nice bearing, just a really nice piece. Black spokes. How sick is that, guys? Man, just so nice looking. All right, I'm just gonna set this aside for now. Take off the rear fender or the front fender from the rear tire. Easy peasy.
very nicely wrapped up. Stark Bard front fender, guys. Really nice piece. All right, so the next step actually is to put the handlebars on, but the handlebars that I'm actually putting on this bike, I don't have yet. They're arriving in maybe an hour or so. So I'm gonna hold off on that for the time being. What I will do though is take the stand out and take the rest of the packaging off the bike so we can take a look at it. And then uh, once I get the new bars, we'll go ahead and proceed with the assembly. So this is strapped on the front as well. So both fork legs are strapped onto the crate. Very well packaged, I must say. Everything's very well protected. Just move this out of the way. Slide it up the side. Here's a look at the stand on the bike. So I do have to put the charger inside of it. Although I was actually thinking I might, I might actually keep the charger separate from the stands, but we'll see how it goes. I might install it originally, but I might actually take it out of this. Just because sometimes, especially with my other bike, it's, it's nice to have the charger. You can kind of place it wherever you need to place it. Uh, so I'll, I'll fill that out, but you can see the front of the stand has a step up to it and that's because the skid, the skid frame on the bottom is a little bit on an angle and so this serves to keep the bike level when it's on the stand. So just wanted to point that out. Alright, so what's in this box is I actually got a left hand rear brake kit in addition to the foot brake kit. Because and the reason I did that is because out in Barcelona, I really like the handbrake, but that was on that particular track. I'm really curious how I will feel and what I'll prefer here in Southern California on the tracks that I'm used to. So what this is, is an entire left-hand rear brake kit. So I have, you can see I'll unwrap this real quick just to show you guys. But you guys can see here, here's the, Stick that down there. Here's the uh, left master cylinder. And uh, you can see it's really nice piece. Nice lever. Actually, Stark sent me the entire kit all the way straight back to the caliper. So I have two full brake setups for my bike. And I'll be interested to see what I prefer bouncing between each one. So that's sweet. Uh, really happy about that. Really looking forward to trying that out. All right guys, so the next part here, I'm gonna unbolt the bike from the crate and we're gonna lift up the back tire, slide the charger out, and then eventually I'm gonna lift the bike over onto the stand, which I placed on the side of the crate. And that'll allow me to get the front end off the crate as well as get the front end up off the ground and also, you know, assemble the front end of the bike. So let's go ahead and do it. Cooper, what's this? Come here. He's got a special helper to come help me. What do you think, dude? Yeah. Good boy. Okay, we've got the straps off. Next, what I'll do is I'll lift the back end of the bike. So just lift the tire up onto the uh, crate here. Just like that. Seems to be pretty sturdy. Take the uh, charger out. Pop this open. We have the foot pegs inside. 
So here we have each of the foot pegs. Really nice pieces. So nice, guys. And I believe we also have, yep, the wheel spacers are here. Take these out so you guys can see. So there's the front wheel spacers. All right, at this point, what you need to do is, the instructions say to put the stand next to the side of the bike and lift the back tire off the crate and put the bike on the stand kind of sideways and then you unbolt the front end. What I'm going to do is I have this lift stand that I'm going to use and I'm going to place the bike on that just because doing this by myself uh, I don't have any help at the moment so I just want to make sure that I'm not going to drop the bike or anything and so I'm going to put it on my lift stand it's going to help me maneuver the bike around a little bit easier as I do this by myself. But we'll take this, put it on that lift stand and then uh, we'll unbolt the front end and get the bike up on the stand so we can wheel it around and work on it. All right, so I'm just going to lift up the back here. Okay, so we got the bike on the stand. Okay, to make this easy for you guys, when you have the bike on the stand like this, notice how the crate is kind of tilted because the front end's turned a little bit. So you're gonna to wanna to lift up to take tension off the axle to make it easy to slide the axle out. So just go ahead and lift up on the crate and work this axle out, just like that. Should be able to maneuver the bike up onto the stand and away from the crate. So let's go ahead and do that. There we have it. So now I can remove this crate and take this crate out of the way. Jack up this bike so I can work on it a little bit more comfortably. Check that out guys, how sweet does that look? Alright guys, I got the right side foot peg on and honestly it wasn't the easiest thing to do. Um, you really have to compress the spring up against the, the frame here and align this bolt almost perfectly to get it threaded in. And boy, these the teeth on these foot pegs are pretty sharp so just be careful when you're doing that and take your time. Make sure you don't uh, cross thread this when you're screwing it in. Um, so probably one of the more difficult things you'll do when you assemble this bike, but it really wasn't too bad. It's just something to note. And again, I'm gonna use the torque wrench here at 20 Newton meters to torque this down. The first time feeling the click of the torque wrench, it's actually really nice. So on to the next one. All right guys, so I got the left foot peg on and just like the right one, I had a little bit of trouble if I'm being honest. It isn't the easiest thing to do, but I think I found the trick out for doing it on the other side. So here's what I suggest you guys try to do and I'll give you a little bit of tips for doing it yourself. So it's really super important that you align this pin perfectly straight because the threads on the pin are on the back side and you're pushing the pin up you know, towards the front of the bike. And in order to do that, with the spring tension, as you're putting this through, the pin wants to actually sit like cockeyed. And so what I recommend you guys do, what I found worked for me, is you actually take the, your palm of your hand as you're sliding this pin through and compress the foot peg up like this as you have your wrench here pushing the pin through. And doing that will allow enough wiggle room, enough play in the pin to align it properly. And as you're tightening this pin, make sure you're pushing pretty firmly on the pin as you're tightening so that you make sure you do not cross thread these threads. Um, other than that, just take your time with it. It was a little frustrating if I'm being honest, but uh, I was able to do it. And uh, you know, ultimately it is a nice design. It, 
you know, you don't have to rely on a cotter pin to hold the pin in place. So that's really nice. Um, just be extra careful when you're installing these. But there you go. All right, let's go ahead and uh, rip off the protection. Go ahead and install the front wheel real quick and I'll put on the stock handlebars and the front fender just to uh, put them on but I do have another set coming so I'm going to actually replace all that um, in, a, in a bit and I actually also have a few other parts I'm going to put on this bike that I won't reveal just quite yet um, so we'll go ahead and get that all buttoned up and then uh, go from there so I'm just going to slide the axle out Just got to grab the wheel spacers here. Alright, so the next step, uh, I should have did this earlier, but I'm doing it now, is we're going to remove the front number plate and also the bar mounts. We're going to mark, we're going to mount the handlebars on the bike and button up some of the wiring here, get the front brake all buttoned up, and then we're going to uh, put the number plate back on and put the front fender on and get everything set up and ready to go. And this thing will be done in a few minutes here. So. First off, just unloosen this down here. There's a single bolt, the T30. Super nice T handle that's supplied with the kit. Back side of the bark front number plate. And what you'll do here is you're just gonna slide the front brake line kind of like you have to like bend this plastic a little bit, but just snake it in here. And for now, we'll leave the front number plate sitting here. And then my bike particularly came, these clamp bolts came pretty loose because this is just a piece of rolled up cardboard. Um, so you can just finger loosen these. And this is the T45. I'm gonna pop open this cover here. So you basically just squeeze these tabs together and pull this out. And then what I'll also do is unbolt using the T30 T handle, unbolt the, the mounting bracket for this. Because we do have to actually uh, tuck some of the wiring up into this harness. So you can see how the wiring buttons up here. Now this is really nice. On my Alta, all these wires are kind of just hanging out front. So Stark did a really nice job of adding this harness here and this cover to keep these plugs not only out of the elements, but nice and tucked away and very nice in here. And there's even a channel, if you come look here, there's even a ch plastic channel down through the triple clamp where the wires go. So that's pretty nice as well. Really nice and neat design. There's really not much play here. And so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take all these bolts all the way out because you're not going to have enough room to really lift this up high out. And all of these plugs are going to go down inside this harness here. Now you can see one is opened 
one so so you could it really you can't screw this up um, really you see these plugs are very specific um, so one is an open square the other one is a I guess male square one's a female square and you have a uh, female square here and a male square here so you just match those up it's pretty easy so I'm just gonna lay this on here for the set for a second while I get everything else buttoned up and Make sure this wiring goes the right way. All right, just wanted to show you guys one really nice little extra feature they added to these clamps. You can see not only are the, the uh, tightening order engraved in the clamps, in the bar clamps, but also you have a centering line to mark your angle of your bars. So you can be ultra precise with the setting of your bars. I really like that. I'm very particular with how my bars are set on my bikes. And so this helps you do that rather easily. You can see on the right side, there's even like an arrow-like indicator. And so as you're moving the bar forward and back, like there's neutral. And we could see even, you know, there's vertical hash lines to help you center the bar on each side. So you just kind of slide it over. And then I usually run either minus half or minus one on mine. And that actually allows me to roll the bars back a little bit. It's just a little bit more comfortable for me. That's how I prefer to run it. And uh, so really nice little addition they add. Little attention to detail matters. And that's what you get with this bike. All right, so you can tell if you pull these wires out of the way in the harness can you guys see here how the clip is offset and if you notice in the center the clip is grabbing on the female side of the plug you notice on this plug there's a it's narrower here it's got a narrow shoulder here and what that means is this is supposed to clip onto that narrower part like that right um, so, so the bike came to me with these flipped to the other side, and I don't think that's correct. I think it should be on this side, just based on how that clip is supposed to work. And so what I'm a little concerned about is there's not really much, much room here for me to wiggle with, with this other cable coming across. So I'm just going to try to do my best here um, and swap these around so that... This on the right side. Let's take this out too. We'll go underneath. Push that back in. Plug this in. And now you can see how that clip grabs that shoulder there. So that's how that really should be. Okay, and then the map switch, you can see now the clip grabs the lower part of the shoulder there, and that's how it should be in there. So make sure you guys pay attention to that. So if you're looking at the front of the bike, your throttle side should be on the left side of this harness, and your map switch should be on the right side of this harness, and the display charger is in the, in the center, so that the clips you know, grab the, the narrower part of the clip. All right, I think I spent too much time on that, but just the minor details matter to me. So we're gonna go ahead and push this cover back on. Make sure these wires are all tucked in here so they're not getting crimped or anything. And we'll snap the cover back on right like that. Take our T30 T handle, slide these up. Beautiful thing about electric bike is you don't really need to use Loctite because these electric bikes do not vibrate. So I usually do with my other one. I probably will with this, but for right now, we'll get this snugged up. Should be pretty fine. You don't need too much torque here. It's just holding plastic.
Really nice firm click on this torque wrench. I'm loving that. Go ahead and torque at the front. Okay, and then we'll go around the horn again just to double check everything. A nice firm click. Perfect. Okay, all set with that. Next step is let's install this front fender and then we'll get the front number plate back on. Same break, Brembo master cylinder. Just like a KTM or a Husky, same unit. So that means you're gonna be able to use KTM replacement levers. Throttle cable out of the way. Now, my Alta uses the same throttle and, um, you know, on that bike, the throttle cable is on the down position, kind of out of the way. So I may be rotating this whole housing downwards. It's very easy to do. You just undo the bolt here and um, rotate it. So I may be doing that. I will say uh, one thing the kit does not come with, the tool kit, is an 8mm socket. I would have liked to see an 8mm socket in here so I wouldn't have to use this box wrench to do this. But I, I have an 8mm socket. I'm just trying to use the tools that came with the bike. And one thing with these brakes is you have this lever adjustment. You have this black knob here that adjusts the position of the lever. And you wanna make sure that wherever you set your master cylinder that it doesn't hit this throttle housing. So just make sure when you're setting it, because if you move it too far, you'll notice it'll hit the throttle housing and you won't be able to fully squeeze in your brake. So I like to use the brake kind of inward a bit anyway. So I don't typically have any issue with that. But just keep that in mind as you guys are putting this brake on. So the front fender bolts come pre-installed underneath on the lower triple clamp. So you just unloosen those. They're the T30 bit. You can just use the T handle. Take those out. And they have these collars on them and you know just a small small bolt. So take those out and we'll install the front fender. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put on the front number plate now. And just wanted to point something out. If you look at this front fender, the front fender as they designed it has these kind of diamond shaped notches in them on both sides. And if you look at the bottom, you have these diamond shaped tabs. So it actually serves to hold this front fender in place quite nicely. And so you just simply stick that in there and then rock this back and button up the front fender. So we'll take that bolt, slot it through, there you have it. So one actually cool thing that I read in the manual, when you strap this bike down in a truck, you guys notice there's these openings here on both sides where you can see, you can see the, the fork and the lower triple clamp. You actually will put your straps down through this slot, through the triple clamps, instead of going up on the handlebars. And that's actually pretty cool in my opinion because then you're not like nicking up your handlebars or it's really like kind of nice and neat down lower too um, to kind of keep it out of the way. So that's that's pretty nice. Now one thing I'll say is I'm a, I would have maybe liked to see a brake guide here. There's no brake guide here. And so if you guys can see this, the front brake line is just kind of exposed here. And while it's 
it certainly held up on the backside, you know, of the front fender with the channel. You're going to be this this cable is going to be moving up and down as you compress the fork, and so I'm a little concerned about wear and tear on this front brake line. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. But maybe maybe in the future they'll they'll put something here to protect the front brake line from from chafing or rubbing up against some of these edges. But I'll have to, I'll have to keep an eye on that. I'll let you guys know if I have any problems with that. But here we go. Looking super sick. Wow, man. What a nice looking dirt bike. The easiest way to do this is what I think is to lay the stand on its side and then basically just drop the charger down in here. Um, so you want to make sure that the bottom side the lid kind of flops down and it actually can be slid underneath which is kind of nice um, make sure that's facing downwards obviously and we'll go ahead and just slide this in there and it looks like you do have to squeeze that out a bit just to pass go ahead and slide it in First time sitting on my very own Star Park. Let's get the front brake set up. Feels good for now. I gotta say, first impressions, the uh, Suspension feels quite stiff. Maybe it'll break in a bit and uh, I think pretty quickly I'll share with you guys what the plans I have for this bike in terms of components and Doing some collaborations with a few companies. So that's going to be exciting to announce here pretty soon I'll let you guys know about that when it happens, but I Could tell the bike is definitely sprung for my weight. It feels pretty good really curious to get out on the track and try it though so but here we are guys, dream come true. It's finally here, it finally happened in my garage in Southern California. And next thing to do is go ride, so. All right guys, that's a wrap on unboxing and assembling my new Stark Varg. Just so excited to finally have this bike in my garage here in Southern California and Really looking forward to my first ride on the bike, which will be this weekend, and stay tuned for those videos. It's going to be an absolutely epic experience, and man, I'm just going to be smiling the entire time. It's going to be so much fun. Take a look at this bike, guys. Such a good looking bike. Yeah!